Hi guys, it's Daniel here. Last time I left you with this question. If we have 4 to the power of n times the quantity 2 minus uh, root 2 plus root 2 plus root 2 all the way to root 2 with n square roots, then what is this value uh, approach as n goes to infinity? So the correct answer is unbelievably pi squared over 4. Oops, pi squared over 4. So how could this completely random expression with a bunch of square roots that are nested together somehow approach pi squared over 4, not only having a pi in it, but pi squared in it. Well, I'll show you why. So the first most toughest thing to deal with in this problem is the square roots, the nested square roots here. And not only just um, a constant number of nested square roots, we have n nested square roots, and n is variable. And since we're taking n goes to infinity, well, uh, n is going to be some sort of variable that we keep on need to keep on changing. So this makes it really tough to deal with this expression because um, any sort of normal way we deal with this sort of limits type of question is perhaps by using a sledgehammer known as Le Hopital's theorem. Unfortunately, since n is over the integers and since we have an integer number of square roots, we can't simply just take the derivative of an expression like this. So Le Hopital won't work. And any other sort of normal calculus methods might not work here. So what else is there to do? The trick to this uh, problem, the leap of intuition, is to notice that this square root of 2 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 2, this type of expression has a very special property. And I will show this property by considering the expression cosine of x. So what is cosine of x equal to? Well, we do know one thing. Cosine of 2x is equal to 2 times cosine x squared minus 1, which means that cosine x is equal to well, let's see, add both sides by 1, cosine 2x plus 1, divide both sides by 2, and take the square root, cosine 2x plus 1, all over 2, which we can rewrite as 1 half times the square root of 2 cosine 2x plus 2. So, hmm, we seem to have a square root here for the representation of cosine x and even more we have a 2 right here so perhaps these two completely seemingly unrelated uh, algebra expressions might actually be related after all so let's see what happens if we take this a step further not only can cosine x be represented in terms of 1 half square root of 2 cosine 2x plus 2 maybe 2x can all or cosine 2x can also be represented in terms of the same thing. So if we know that cosine 2x equals 1 half square root of 2 cosine 4x plus 2, and try plugging this straight into here, we get cosine x is equal to 1 half times 2 plus. Now let's see here. 2, cos 2 cosine 2x is equal to 2 times 1 half, so the 2 and 1 half cancel out, and we're just left with um, 2 plus uh, 1 half root 2 plus root 2 plus 2 cosine 4x. So now we're beginning to see a little bit uh, close more obviously how these two expressions are related because if cosine 4x equals 0 then we get 1 half times root 2 plus root 2 which is basically this nested roots expression but with n equals 2. So in fact we can continue this pattern by plugging in cosine 4x equals root of something else, successfully plugging in more and more values until we reach the general expression, cosine x is equal to 1 half times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus da 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 plus the square root of 2, where there are n square roots, and the final square root of 2 has a plus 2 cosine 2 to the n x. So here there are n square roots. 
n square roots. Okay, so now all we need to do to match this exactly with our um, root 2 plus root 2, da da da, all the way to root 2 with n square roots is to set cosine 2 to the power of n of x, or two, cosine 2 to the nx to be equal to 0. So um, what value of 2 to the nx equals 0, or it makes cosine equal to 0? Well, cosine 1 half equals 0, or sorry, cosine pi over 2 equals 0. So um, we can set 2 to nx equal to pi over 2, which means that x is equal to pi over 2 to the n plus 1. So now we know that after moving the 1 half to the other side, 2 cosine pi over 2 to the n plus 1 is equal to it's root 2 plus root 2 plus da 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 all the way to the final root 2 where there are n square roots. n square roots and uh, so that means that we can take this expression which is much simpler and plug it back into our original our original limit right here 4 to the n times 2 minus root blah 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 blah, blah all those twos so let's go ahead and do that the question now says we want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of 4 to the power of n times 2 minus 2 cosine pi over 2 to the n plus 1. So now what? Well, we see that 4 to the n goes to infinity as n goes to infinity, and 2 minus 2 cosine pi over 2n plus 1. Well, pi over 2n plus 1 goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, so that means 2 cosine pi over 2n plus 1 goes to 2 cosine 0, which is um, 1, or sorry, 2 as n goes to infinity, so that means 2 minus that goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So now even though we did say that n is a positive integer, not a real, since these are both real functions, we sort of uh, assume that we, now, we can now let n be any real number. So now at this point, we can apply Le Hopital. However, is there an easier way? Because I don't really want to take the derivative of like 4 to the power of n, much less cosine pi over 2 to the n plus 1. That just seems messy. So let's think of a slightly easier way to find this limit without dealing with all that mess. And to do that, well, the only thing that's the problem here is the cosine. The cosine is a little hard to deal with. So instead of cosine, let's, um, uh, let's use something that's a little easier to deal with, which is polynomials. In particular, the Taylor series of cosine pi over 2n plus 1. Well, the Taylor series of cosine x, when we plug in x equals pi over 2n plus 1. So recall that the Taylor, Taylor series of cosine x is equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the power 4 over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus etc. So that means that cosine of pi over 2n plus 1 is going to equal to 1 minus pi over 2n plus 1 squared over 2 factorial plus pi pi over 2n plus 1 to the power of 4 all over 4 factorial minus etc. So that means that we just need to find the limit as n goes to infinity of 4 to the n times 2 minus 2 times um, this entire expression. Uh, let's see. Can I select this? Uh, okay. I guess I'll just write it out. 1 minus pi over 2n plus 1 squared over 2 factorial plus pi over 2n plus 1 to the power of 4 over 4 factorial minus etc. So now um, let's see what happens. Well the 2 here and the 2 over here cancels out. So we're left with limit 
as n goes to infinity of, well, let's see. There's a 2 to the n plus 1 squared over here, which cancels out with the 4 to the power of n on the outside to only give um, 1 fourths. So we get this is 2 times 1 pi squared over 4 over 2 factorial. Okay, so the 2 factorial and the 2 also cancel out. So we're left with the first term is pi squared over 4. And then we have to subtract. Um, let's see. Well, we have a 2n plus, 2 to the power of n plus 1 to the power of 4, which is 4 to the n plus 2n plus 2, which multiplied by the 4 to the n on here gives 4 to the n plus 2 on the denominator. So uh, let's see, minus pi to the power of 4 over 4 to the n plus 2 times 4 factorial, which is already in the de denominator, times 2, which the 2 over here, and then plus, etc. So now let's see what we get. Well, the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression, which is just constant times 4 to the um, negative n minus 2, four, or 1 over 4 to the n plus 2, as n goes to infinity, this thing is just going to equal 0. And for all the terms that are after this, um, the, there's going to be a negative exponent of n in the expression. So the limit as n goes to infinity of all of these expressions is going to all be equal to 0. So that means we are left with the limit as n goes to infinity of pi squared over 4, which is equal to pi squared over 4, of course. So after all that work, we are left with miraculously pi squared over 4 as the limit of this expression. Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today I'm going to talk about a really special uh, series of nested roots.